Hey guys, today we're going back to the early 1970s when Craig Breedlove and Bill Frederick were going head to head on the drag strip with competing rocket dragsters. That's right, rocket dragsters. For both Breedlove and Frederick, this was kind of a first step toward building a full-size rocket car to go after the land speed record, which was then held by Gary Gablich in Blue Flame. All that's coming up. Before we get going, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you won't miss any videos coming up. Okay, let's go. Bill Frederick was Australian by birth, relocated to Southern California, and built up a chain of butcher shops. That was how he earned a living. His hobby was building fast cars on the side. One of his early creations from 1962 was a jet car he called Valkyrie. It didn't have the power or the sophisticated design of Craig Breedlove's Spirit of America, and was never a contender for the land speed record. Frederick used it mostly as an exhibition vehicle to earn appearance fees, working the drag circuit. Gary Gablich was one of the drivers he used. Now, by the early 1970s, Frederick's butcher shop chain had gone bankrupt, and he was building fast cars full-time. It was his full-time living. So he was always looking around for something new, a new attraction, that would pull in big crowds at the drag strips. So he builds a rocket car, dubs it Courage of Australia. It's essentially a scaled-down copy of the Blue Flame rocket car that Gary Gablich had driven for the land speed record in 1970. Similar configuration, but quite a bit smaller. And the same kind of rocket, a hydrogen peroxide rocket. When hydrogen peroxide comes into contact with a metallic catalyst, like a silver mesh screen, it instantly decomposes into water and oxygen, and that generates thrust. For Courage of Australia, it was something like 6,100 pounds of thrust. That was like three times the weight of the vehicle, so we're talking a whole lot of power. This thing debuts in November 1971. In a private test at the Orange County International Raceway, it becomes the first car of any kind to hit 300 miles per hour on a quarter-mile course. Courage of Australia is clocked at 311 miles per hour. So Bill Frederick is all set. This baby is gonna draw crowds. Okay, now let's look at Craig Breedlove. Craig started to turn toward rockets in the late 1960s when he was thinking about what to build for his third land-speed car to follow Spirit of America, Sonic 1. Here's his design from December 1969 for a land-speed rocket car he dubbed Spirit of America, Sonic 2. There was even a plan that if Craig could get this car built, and Bill Frederick went ahead with his full-sized Courage of Australia rocket car, they would race them on the Bonneville Salt Flats for the land speed record, going head-to-head -head like on a drag strip. Craig's manager at the time, Bob Cashler, he tried to put this deal together. Two competing rocket cars on the Salt Flats, a primetime TV show, the race of the century, with a million-dollar prize to go to the winner. Cool idea, but it didn't go anywhere. Craig couldn't get sponsorship to build Sonic 2. So what he did was he took a piston engine streamliner that he had previously built for American Motors, called American Spirit, and he converted it into a rocket dragster. His plan was to take it around to the drag strips as an exhibition vehicle, put on a show and earn appearance fees, 
just like what Bill Frederick was doing. And at the same time, he'd be getting experience working with rockets. Here's the finished car. It made its first appearances starting in early 1972. He initially painted it yellow and called it Screaming Yellow Zonker, after the candy popcorn snack that he'd lined up as the sponsor. That he'd almost lined up, I should say, because that deal fell through. Craig then had to line up another sponsor, a toiletries company that made the men's cologne English leather. Craig repaints the car deep brown and renames it the English Leather Special. Same car, different paint job. Now, this car of Craig's, it's a beast. 20 feet long, about 7 feet shorter than Frederick's Courage of Australia. It's about waist high, and it has a very different kind of rocket that puts out a lot more thrust. 8,500 pounds of thrust. The car itself weighs 2,000 pounds, fully fueled. So it has a thrust-to-weight ratio at takeoff of more than 4 to 1. This thing is gonna go. Now let me just give a few details here about Craig's rocket. It was designed by Jerry Elverham, the guy who designed the rocket on the lunar module for the Apollo missions. When Neil Armstrong landed on the surface of the moon, he was using Jerry Elverham's rocket. Jerry sketched out a scaled-down, simplified version of this Apollo moon rocket for Craig, and Craig and his team built it using fittings they bought from an oil refinery supplier. It was a bipropellant, hypergolic rocket, meaning that it used two substances, a fuel and an oxidizer, that instantly reacted on contact. That's the hypergolic part. The two substances Craig used, kept apart in two separate tanks, were nitrogen tetroxide and unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine, or hydrazine for short. When these two liquids are brought together in the rocket's combustion chamber using Jerry Elverham's patented pintle injector, the reaction is incredible. There's no vroom, vroom, vroom like in a top fuel dragster. It's just silence, silence, then boom. It's like a howitzer going off. Instant acceleration. Craig says it was like being hit by a Mack truck from behind. This thing has so much speed potential that Craig doesn't dare use its full burn time, five and a quarter seconds, on a drag strip. There's just not enough room to slow down. To really see what it can do over a quarter mile, he has to take it out to the Bonneville Salt Flats. When he does, on August 28th, 1973, he smashes the quarter mile record. He does it in 4.65 seconds. 377.754 miles per hour. So, if he had such a powerful rocket, such a fast car, why did Craig Breedlove lose the rocket war to Bill Frederick? Because in a way, he did. Here's Craig to explain. The uh, car was really amazing to watch because it, it had, you know, that hydrazine, nitrogen tetroxide motor. So, I mean, I mean, I remember the first time Don Garlick saw it, he said, he came over to the pit area and he said, man, he says that's the real shit, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it would uh, hurt the fillings in your teeth when the engine ran. W what happened was when Bill Frederick, who, who built a really nice rocket car uh, called the Courage of Australia, uh -huh. Uh, it was, but it was a hydrogen peroxide car, and it's a very nice car. He's a really good craftsman, a good builder. But, you know, the thing just, as far as an, an exhibition show for the drag races, I mean, it, it just made his car look like a swizzle stick compared <laughs> to ours. And, and, uh, and his car was really fast and everything. It just, you know, this was not anywhere near the show. And then, of course, the potential in mine was so much greater mm -hmm. than his because of the engine system. And so he figured we were going to really uh, take his thunder. And so he wrote a letter to the National Hot Rod Association's insurance carrier uh -huh. and uh, uh, just got every kind of a, a 
thing he possibly could on hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide and everything and said there's no way that this should be allowed in you know uh, in, in for public exhibition and so on and so forth and the insurance company was uh, really taking a, a tremendous risk uh, to be insuring NHRA with this car my car mm-hmm. be, being you know going to races and exhibiting uh, making exhibition runs and stuff and and so uh, the insurance company contacted NHRA and they just said and Wally tried to explain to him, well, look, it's a man-rated system. It's from TRW. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's very much higher rated than, than the, the Frederick car, as a matter of fact. And uh, So uh, anyway, but they, would, they just wouldn't have any of it. And Wally called me after it at all. We'd made test runs for him and done everything and got completely approved, the stamp of approval and, you know, the whole deal. And, and um uh, he just said that uh, you know he, that they were in jeopardy of losing their insurance for the for, for an, all of NHRA. So he just said they they did, they just couldn't let me run. So that meant that we had to run the car at fly by night uh, drag r- drag strips and stuff. So we lost our golden carrot, so yeah. to speak. And I had bookings all set up for it all across the country and. So everything got just canceled, and uh, it just happened just, you know, like one afternoon in a 10-minute phone call from oh, Wally. Okay. So, Craig Breedlove, with his massively powerful hydrazine rocket, basically got shut down. He'd been hoping to earn some money with this thing, get solvent after some financially tough years, and hopefully get a new land speed project going. But instead he gets iced out of the game. This was a big factor in his decision to give up on motorsports in December 1973. He became a real estate agent and stayed away from racing for more than a decade. When he started thinking about building a land speed car again, after Richard Noble reclaimed the record for Britain in 1983, Craig's first idea was to build a rocket car. But now it's the U.S. government that shuts him down, with regulations restricting hydrazine. You can own the stuff, but you can't transport it. So that means it's effectively banned. The U.S. government was cracking down on hydrogen peroxide, too. You couldn't get the concentrated stuff anymore that you needed to run a rocket. That's why, when Craig finally did build a new land speed car, Spirit of America Sonic Aero, he had no choice but to use an old-fashioned jet. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time. For this run, Craig will add one second more to his burn time to give him another 100 miles an hour. The total of three seconds will shoot him up to 200. Just step down on it and it lights almost perfect every time for the green light. And you're literally shot from the starting line just like a bullet. Uh, However, all of the noise and everything that everyone experiences when I leave, I don't experience it. I just have sort of a low-pitched rumble inside the car and this just phenomenal feeling of acceleration. I mean, it's just uh, incredible. It's really sort of a limitless thing. Uh, I, I, you know, foresee uh, 400 mile an hour quarters uh, in the future.